So often people see mobile chaps as being something that's quite light, but it's nice and it's easy and quick to send a message to someone about work, whether it's WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, Telegram or whatever. But then on the other hand, email is a little bit too heavy. You have to start and end with a dear sir and then a signature, and it can be quite confusing. But this is not so different to what was going on back in 1995 when you had email that was considered too light and then maybe sending a letter was considered quite heavy but still able to get there. So what we're doing is we're kind of replacing things because as we know now the letter is rarely used even outside the organization and that is where people are going with the next stage. So you have WhatsApp here and Outlook here. And what Teams is, is effectively trying to bridge a gap between the two of them. Teams is where chat meets email. And that is what we're gonna talk about in this video. So my name is David Benheim and I have lots of videos on Teams, Outlook, Google Sheets, Excel, Power BI, PowerPoint, Zoom. Just check out my channel if you want more information. Today's data inputs comes in lots of different shapes and sizes from news feeds to messages to sending things on Skype or LinkedIn or whatever. And I categorize these as either in boxes or in briefs. And we're going to now try and find a way to bridge the two. And that is where Teams comes in. So Teams, as soon as you open up, has five things on the side by default. You can add other apps as if you want to. And here, for example, you have chat. This is effectively the same as WhatsApp, really, or other chat apps. Uh, except you can go a little bit further, you can screen share and you can call directly from it. You have a calendar which is synced to an Outlook calendar and very similar to that, but I find it a lot less powerful than that. And then you have call section which is with voicemails and calls and things like that. I personally don't use this last one very often. The other one that you, the other side of it is activity and this is based on notifications you get from stuff that happens in your Teams uh, or your chats. And then here you have files at the bottom of it where you can access your OneDrive and SharePoint files quite easily. And the most sort of game-changing thing about it is in this one, channel-based chat. So channel-based chat is sort of this in-between when it comes to comparing email and chat. It's somewhere in the middle where you have threads to follow and you have conversations and channels but you also have it from a much easier and friendlier environment than when you're talking about Outlook. The Teams hierarchy. So when you have Teams over here, um, I deem this to be similar to an apartment block. So let's say you have a block here, and within this block you have apartment 101, 102. Each one has different rooms within it. And some of the parts may be private. So for example, the bedroom is private in both of them and this entire apartment is private. So effectively, everyone in the block, let's say, has access to these two apartments, but only a small section of the people here have access to apartment 103. And equally, the bedroom is maybe only accessible by uh, parents or whatever, whereas the other rooms can be accessed by everyone. So a team's hierarchy is somewhat similar to this. You've got these people in the team and let's say, for example, that every red person can access all the red stuff. Everyone that's blue and purple can access the other things as well. So apartment 101 and 102 can be accessed by everyone, as I was saying before. But then when you've got these specific red things, these are only accessible by the red people. So Teams hierarchy is, well, the organization as the top layer. And then you have something called teams and something called channels underneath there. You can have public channels. Those are by far the most common type, or you can also have private channels. Private channels can only be accessed by a sub group of people. And there's also a way to go further where you can actually invite people from the next block over. So this would be the equivalent for people outside your organization trying to access your team, you can invite guest users, and I'll show how to do that in this video. Now, looking at the hierarchy here, I have these teams and underneath the channels. So the teams would be the apartments, and each team, each apartment, has multiple rooms underneath. So here I've got the general room, but I also have some other rooms like 
what's new in tech that I can see with which is within my team and people posting about that, people posting links, pictures, etc. And you can start new conversations or reply. Everything is deemed to be a conversation. And instead of having something that you might have in a chat app, whereas it's all just one thing, this is more continuous. I guess in the email spectrum, this would be like an email thread or something like that. So from here, you can reply to certain messages saying, for example, I like this, and then they get notified about it. You can also out mention people. And then you can also use these and you can do reactions to messages. You can also, uh, for example, save the messages. And that is kind of like flagging it. It means that you'll be able to get back to it later on if you want to read it later on. So for example, I can say this in French and then Craig, who might not speak French, can go here and choose to translate it. And then it looks good. It's not perfect. It can complicate. But uh, I didn't use the proper um, accents in French when I wrote it. <laughs> you can do all sorts of other things here, like edit it, attach files. If you are going to attach files, I have another video where I go through that in more detail. You can have GIFs and other fun stuff. When you want to create a new channel within this, you can click here and add channel. And then you can say um, new channel here. Generally, you would do a standard one that's accessible by everyone in the team. You don't have to. The other option is a private channel, which means you can choose who gets access to it. So it's like this. You can add tabs for different apps or you can start conversations. It by default comes with files and wiki. So files is kind of like a SharePoint folder for where you want to have documents related to the team. And then wiki is just some quick notes. So it's a very, very, very simple notes pad, kind of like probably the notes thing on your phone. You can have different sections and have conversations about it, do some basic editing, but it's not as sophisticated even as OneNote, for example. You can then add different tabs of so, so, so many things. Some of them are Microsoft based like Form or Excel, or some of them are not like YouTube or PDFs, or uh, you can have a website and then it's linked directly to a website there as well. So for example, I can do this and I can call this Excel Consulting. And I can just paste that here and then press save and it will just post that over there as a new tab. You can uh, edit some details about it by clicking on there and manage channel. And within that, it's pretty straightforward. You can just sort of change some names, some settings and uh, decide if anything needs to be moderated or not. Not something I, I ever do. Uh, if you want to add a new one as well, that's a private one. You can just put your private here. Start typing who to add or skip it. And the difference is the private one will have this over there. You can also um, manage things directly for your team. So you can click on there and choose to add a channel directly from here or manage team. And then here are the people who are inside it uh, as the owners. And here are the guests or the other members. You can change someone to be an owner as well. You can add tags, but I won't talk about that in this video. Here are the channels and some details about them certain other settings, uh, any apps that are linked. So these have been added already, but you can add some new ones if you want to and some more analytics. If you want to create a new team, click on here. You can create a team or you can join an existing team. So if someone has created a public team, then they will come up here. Otherwise, you can create a new one and you can either do it from scratch or from a Microsoft Groups um, or this is brand new. You can now do a template. So a template can be interesting because it comes preloaded with loads of channels, loads of apps within those and some other features that are quite useful for them. So you can have your defaults here or you can even just create your own one for your own organization. So here it will allow you to manage tasks, documents and collaborate. It comes with these apps, including tasks by planner and to do OneNote. Uh, websites and other things. And here are the channels it would pre-create for you. If you don't do this and you just do from scratch, then you choose whether it's private or public. And private means that you get to invite who joins. 
public means that people are not added to it inside your organization, but they can find it like I showed you before. So private, for example, let's give it a name. So test private team. And then you can give it a description. It creates it. Then you can start typing who to add. You can do it by a name or an entire distribution list or security group as well. Press skip and then go directly to it. So this is what pops up by default. You can add people, create more channels or do things. Here again, we see the files and wiki. So here I am in my Excel consulting, which is my own organization, but I'm actually a guest in all of these other ones. For example, in Microsoft, I'm a guest and I can access that. And then here it will take me to the Microsoft one. And I have access to a lot of things within Microsoft because I'm a Microsoft MVP. Here is something that announces Power BI community calls. This is not an MVP thing, but it is announcing a lot of these things. Again, I can do conversations, reply. This notification means I've been at mentioned, and this means I have a chat that I can check. Notice that when you are a guest, you do need to flip between them. So the list of chats that I have here is different to the list of chats that I have within my own organization. And that can be a little bit confusing. Uh, same with the activity feed. If I switch back here though, you'll notice that I don't have any notifications in my chat because the list of chat is actually different ones as is the list of teams. So it's sort of a hierarchy system where you have to first enter the block and then from the block you go down into which other ones you need to go through. So yeah, I talked about notifications. You can click on here and you can do channel notifications are on or off for each one or customized. And then you can choose exactly what happens for new posts and mentions as well. And then if you click here and choose settings, you get in notifications how it works for each one in a more global setting. So when you get missed email activity emails, when you get different other things as well and when things pop up in activity. I did also mention very briefly what happens with saved messages. So to access them, I can click on saved and this is effectively just the thing that I saved over here as well. As I said, if you want to add someone to a team who is outside your organization, you can just search for people by clicking on add member. And then you can say, for example, and it says here that they're a guest, press add, and then they will get added into it. So press close there, and then I'll see that they are here in members and guests like that. And it says guest. Guests, I can't change them to an owner, and they do have slightly less permissions to do certain things. From your app launcher, you can go to admin, and you might not have access to this, but someone in your organization will. So from here, you can scroll down, and in org wide settings, you have guest access and you can turn it on here. Uh, you can also do more granular things of what they can and can't do. I would generally just turn them all on, but you can if you want to look around that. Then if you actually wanna see who these people are, who are the people with access, you can go to users, and then you can actually get a list of what they can and can't do. This website from Microsoft explains what guests can and can't do quite well. It compares all of the features and capabilities. So. It has gone a lot better. It used to be very limited in what it allowed you to do, but here you can do virtually everything. You can't search within files, share to a chat, um, add apps, create meetings, or access schedules. These are things that are typically only available with your, your tenant in other apps like Outlook and SharePoint as well. Um, and then you can't really do stuff around policies or create a team, discover and join one the organization chart that's not used that much within organizations, the inline translation feature that I showed you earlier you can't do, and you can't be an owner. This is not an exhaustive list, however. For example, you can't use the whiteboard or meeting notes inside a meeting. It's not all listed here, but those features do constantly change, so keep an eye out. Uh, you can um, access things through something called the Azure Active Directory if you want to give people more privileges than usual, but uh, that is more complicated. I'm not going to go into that in this video. So that is managing and creating different teams. And if you like this video, then feel free to check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel if you want more great content like this. Thanks.